I like the diversity I'm seeing in here already. I had to uh, jump in. I love that we have people from Hawaii, Canada, Virginia, me here in Minnesota. Um, I just love the fact that we're all experiencing probably vastly different weather. So, um, but so glad you're all here. Um, we are right now at three o'clock, so I will gladly get started. Um, so today, like um, I mentioned, for you, the, for those of you who were not uh, in earlier, um, really excited you're all here um, and joining us for this uh, really cool webinar. Um, it all, all has to do with how we engage uh, our students uh, in curiosity and how to really spark that in them, um, but not just for the sake of sparking curiosity, but what that really means uh, for their development. Um, what that means for lifelong learning. Um, and then the other part of this webinar that uh, really is meant to help equip you to take some of what we're gonna learn today and put into practice uh, is gonna be shared and give you some real practical tips, um, some resources we have to help do that. Um, so without further ado, I will jump into the session. Um, so one thing I always like to do is just kind of go through basic housekeeping, answer a lot of the common questions. Um, so about questions, definitely please ask us anything. Um, we're doing a webinar about curiosity and I'm sure there's a lot of things uh, you all are very curious about and have questions about. So ask away, um, really do want it to be engaging. Uh, you can do it in the chat or the Q and A. Um, I would recommend the chat only because it will be able to be more interactive in real time. There's a couple of my colleagues uh, that you'll see in here, uh, Shar Armstrong and Gabby Commando. Um, they will be um, responding and engaging with you in the two, um, as well as uh, the presenters and myself will be in there. Uh, so that's just more engaging, but if Q&A works better for you and you have a question that way, feel free. Um, additionally, um, we're gonna go over a lot of information today that is gonna be really uh, useful. The webinar is being recorded though, so you don't have to worry about taking notes. You can just take it in, um, know that you can watch it again, share it with others. Um, we'll also be sharing out a slide deck for you as well. Um, and then the other thing that is a big piece of this is we want to encourage uh, this to continue um, well past today, uh, because this is just the tip of the iceberg about uh, what curiosity can really do for you, your students. Um, and so love to know what successes you're having uh, sparking curiosity uh, with your K through five students. Um, so feel free to tweet at us. Um, obviously any social media, um, works as well. So Facebook, Instagram, we don't yet have a TikTok, but give it time. Um, but use the hashtag PebbleGoCuriosity. Um, and that'll help us be able to uh, just kind of join in that conversation, assist you where you can, help spread the word about some of the awesome things you're doing. So um, without further ado, one second, I skipped over a key slide and I don't know how I did that. Um, so obviously welcome. Um, for those that weren't in here at the beginning, my name is Brian Schmidt. Um, I am the marketing manager for all of our digital products at Capstone. So things like Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next, um, our amazing ebook platform, um, and our newest uh, awesome tool called Capstone Connect. We'll definitely talk a little bit about how to tap into those um, to really get uh, kids engaged uh, in asking questions and uh, exploring curiosity. Um, but without further ado, I want uh, just quick intros from uh, the real stars today, the uh, main panelists. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Sullivan, one of the Amandas that you'll get to know today. I'm a researcher who focuses on early childhood learning and development, predominantly in the sciences, technology, and engineering. And I'm really excited to be a part of this exciting presentation today. Hey guys, I'm Amanda Strawhacker. Um, there are two Amandas and as you'll learn, we are very similar in many ways and we do a lot of work together. So you can just call us the Amandas. Uh, I'm also a researcher and uh, an instructor at Tufts University. And I spend all my time thinking about how young kids can get more excited and involved in STEAM and how we can help educators like yourselves get excited as well. So excited to be here. Hi hey everybody, my name is Shannon McClintock Miller. I am the district teacher librarian and innovation director at Van Meter Community School. 
And I also serve as the Future Ready Librarian spokesperson. So I can't wait to learn from the Amandas and also just answer any questions that you have today. Awesome, thank you three, I appreciate it. Um, so a little bit about what's in store. We've gone through welcomes and introductions. Um, I will briefly talk about Pebble Go only because obviously this is presented by Pebble Go, um, but a lot of the things we're gonna talk about um, Pebble Go is perfect, uh, a perfect tool really to engage student curiosity. Um, and we'll talk about it both as uh, some tools, but give you some other resources at the end. So I wanna give a little foundation to what that is for any of you who might be new to Pebble Go. Uh, the Amandas will dive deep into what is curiosity, um, give some definitions around it, talk about some research um, that's really critical in that space. And it really points to why it is so important. And then uh, Shannon will jump in and really give those uh, huge ideas. And I say huge because, uh, not because they're complex or complicated, quite the opposite, but really huge ideas to kids that can say, wow, I can really embrace this and not even know that they're getting uh, curiosity sparked, but really it's gonna be about questions for them and how to uh, engage them in that and help that uh, improve. Uh, their critical thinking skills and ability and desire to learn. So excited about that. And then, like I said, I, we do what time at the end for questions and answers because uh, I, I know for me in talking about this, doing research into curiosity, it's interesting. It actually sparks more curiosity. So I want to make sure you, uh, you all have the time uh, to be able to uh, ask questions and get some answers as well. Uh, so for anybody who doesn't know what Pebble Go is, um, Pebble Go is a curricular content hub specifically designed for K through two. Um, and it covers areas like animals and science and social studies. Um, biographies is a huge one that kids love learning more and ask questions about some uh, historical figures, current uh, people who live. And then our newest one, uh, newest module in this database called health. Uh, which is comprehensive health. So it gets kids in exploring things like emotions and uh, physical health and just a robust uh, health database to address a lot of uh, needs. But the biggest thing about it is it really is amazing at uh, boosting student engagement, um, sparking curiosity and fostering independence. And we've seen that time and time again with uh, educators throughout the country and throughout the world. Um, over the last two years as students had the world up, turned upside down and so did the educators. So how did they get to engage their students um, to keep the learning happening, keep their kids interested in learning? Um, and then Pebble Go Next, another thing you might hear about in this is uh, really a great next natural step for Pebble Go. So it's meant to address a lot of those same uh, kinds of supports and curiosity within your third through fifth grade students all with articles uh, aligned to state and national standards. It really is a great curricular support. Um, so a lot of the same features, but really aged up appropriately for that next uh, grade level. Um, so that is Pebble Go in a nutshell. Um, if you would like more information, uh, www.pebblego.com is a great resource, gets you more information. You can check out a preview of it, see what all is included. Um, and I am here to answer any questions you might have as well. Um, but now I want to kind of move on to the meat of it, and I will hand over uh, control here to the Amandas. Wonderful. Okay. So while Amanda gets set up, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Dr. Amanda Strawhacker, as I already said. Uh, I have a doctorate in child study and human development, which I'll be leaning on a lot for this presentation. And my day job is the associate director of the Early Childhood Technology graduate certificate program at Tufts University. Um, so basically what that means is I spend all my time thinking about how to engage pre-K to eight students through STEAM curriculum development and technology design in getting really excited and feeling really included in all of the disciplines of STEAM, primarily science and biology is my wheelhouse, but also technology and engineering and all of the interdisciplinary aspects of STEAM. Hi, and I am the other Amanda, Dr. Amanda Sullivan, and I have worked with Amanda Strawhacker 
I'm not sure now, over a decade, I think. Um, and we started working together at Tufts University. We've worked together on various research labs and programs like the Early Childhood Technology Certificate Program at Tufts. And in my own work, I'm a researcher and educator who focuses on positive early experiences across STEAM disciplines, primarily technology and engineering and the sciences. And I focus on advocating and engaging girls and other underrepresented groups in STEM and STEAM from an early age through playful ways and through piquing their curiosity. And that is actually the lens that I've always taken in my work. And so it was really just so exciting to collaborate with Brian and the team at PebbleGo and Capstone because that is what we're all trying to do today in this webinar and in our own work. But we have been using this acronym STEAM, Amanda and I, and we thought maybe before we jump in and we share research and literature that talks about curiosity, because we'll be taking this STEAM lens with our examples from our own practice and our own work, we thought it might make sense to right off the bat define what we mean by that. So Amanda, did you want to yeah. jump into that? So you can see the acronym here on the slide. It stands for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Maybe you have a STEAM program already at your school, or maybe this is a new acronym for you, or maybe you've heard of the somewhat um, longer standing term STEM. Um, we prefer STEAM because it integrates the art, not only the physical or the, um, the performance arts, which are wonderful and have a beautiful place in the world of STEAM, but also the liberal arts, everything from civics to to history, to global education, all of these aspects that sort of make us whole people and whole learners. Um, so if you're thinking, well, STEAM kind of sounds like everything, uh, that's sort of the point. You know, children don't come to these questions with sort of siloed ideas of where their disciplines are going to bring their questions. They sort of just have questions about everything around them. And STEAM gives us the opportunity to really meet kids where they live and bring all of our funds of knowledge, all the tools in our toolkit to bear when we try to answer and explore questions together. So we're going to be using a lot of examples from the world of STEAM, as we mentioned, that's kind of our background and our experience, but whatever you think of as your background or your passion, feel free to swap that in and think of that as we continue to think about curiosity. So we're now talking about the what is curiosity and why is it important part of that, that agenda that Brian shared with you earlier. So just to give you a heads up of what's coming. We're going to start by defining what intellectual curiosity is, specifically the type of curiosity that we're focused on today. Um, and then we're going to take a look at curiosity in the context of human development, child development. What does it look like in the pre-K to kindergarten age range? It's a really, really important and critical time. And then what does it look like in grades one to five and beyond? Still really important and critical, but in a very different way. We're gonna share a couple tips and tricks about how to support curious children um, throughout that age range that we mentioned in a sort of broad way. Um, and then we'll dive right into some resources and hear from Shannon about resources from Pebble Go and what you can do in a very practice-based way right now on the ground to support curiosity. Awesome. So let's jump in with that first agenda item, defining intellectual curiosity. Intellectual curiosity sounds like such a big term, um, but it really is just what you see on screen here, asking big question. It, big questions with the mission being wondering and wanting to figure out how things work, why they work the way they do, and just that thirst for knowledge. That's intellectual curiosity. It's a little bit different than just being curious about logistics or asking questions about whether you can have something or permission to do something. It's these bigger questions about just wondering and wanting to figure things out about the world around you. And if any of you work with very young children, maybe on the younger end of the age range that we advertise for this webinar, the young kindergarten or pre-k preschool students you might be really overly familiar with some of the questions that you see on screen here in fact two of these questions are real questions that my preschool aged uh, son has been asking me this week and we've been using resources like 
Pebble Go to help him explore these questions and find the answers. So if any of you work with young children, feel free to drop in the chat some of the strangest, most exciting, fun questions that you heard from your young students or your own young children. Um, and although these questions are really exciting, we also know that on the flip side, they can be really exasperating sometimes for teachers, adults, and parents who don't know exactly how to answer these questions or how to support kids in answering the questions themselves. Or maybe it's just a logistical like exhaustion because you're getting question after question after question. So don't worry if that is sort of the response you get when you see these questions listed on screen. We're gonna be sharing some strategies so that you feel like you know the best way to approach these questions from your students or your children in the future. But the takeaway is that young children, they're asking these questions and they are already very intellectually curious about the world around them. So some more formal defining of intellectual curiosity, it's the motivation to seek answers to the unknown. But more than that, it's a joy in the process. That is something that is so important in all early learning and development. It's not just fostering curiosity and fostering kids asking these questions. Part of our role as adults is to ensure that that's an enjoyable process, that they love doing it. And so that way they will be motivated to keep on asking more questions and making more discoveries as they grow up and develop. In some of the research and literature around curiosity, we see curiosity being defined almost more like a personality trait. So we might see it defined as the openness to new experiences, the desire for experiencing new things, and this personal willingness to embrace things that are different or changes or the unexpected. And although those sound like personality traits that maybe you think some people have and some people don't, what you'll see when we share some of the research is it's actually not. It's actually something that we as adults can help foster these mindsets and this comfort in kids, and it can last as they grow up um, into adulthood. We also know that curiosity is the driving force behind critical thinking. And critical thinking is, as most of us know, is so important because it's a skill that's important across academic domains as well as professional careers and just in life. Critical thinking is a lot of different things, but it's at its heart, it's this ability to ask big questions, to analyze answers, to make good decisions, right? And that is all tied in and rooted in curiosity. So as we are fostering kids' curiosity, know that we're also fostering critical thinking skills, problem solving, all of that as well. And so having walked through all of that, it's probably no surprise to you that many developmentalists and education specialists think of curiosity as the foundation to early learning early learning and development. So we can look at curiosity as a part of child development, human development in general. It's not something that an individual is either born with or without. Um, it's a developmental process that we as adults can support and foster in our children. We can do this in a lot of different ways. We're gonna be sharing with you today a lot of the ways that after you leave this webinar, you'll be able to put things into practice right away through the activities that you do with children, through the environments that we create for them, but also just in the way that we model our own curiosity and how we respond to those questions, like the ones I showed you earlier that kids are constantly asking. So all of those are ways that we can help support curiosity. And research has shown that kids' curiosity is actually really responsive to adult behavior. So the things that we do can really make a big impact in how curious our young students are. And we can look at these big WH questions, these big what, where, why, especially the why questions as a developmental milestone, especially when it comes to language development. Um, research has shown that asking these types of questions are the groundwork for vocabulary acquisition, language learning, and communication skills in general. 
So we know it's important. We know most of us from having worked in some capacity with young children or from being a parent or knowing young children that even before kindergarten, kids are asking these questions and they're really, really curious. And although this webinar is focused on grades K through five and most of the resources that we're gonna to share to you are focused on K through five, it's really important to show you what's going on with curious young minds before they hit kindergarten and then contrast that to what's happening after they enter formal schooling, which is when many of us who are here today meet these young students. So around age three, children have the capability, the cognitive capability to ask questions about why and how things are the way they are. They want to understand the world around them. Preschool children ask their parents around 100 questions a day. If you are a preschool parent, please share in the chat. I am, and I think this sounds about accurate. Um, and it is amazing to look at altogether between ages of around two and age five, research has shown kids ask around 40,000 questions. So this is a huge number. And this is really just illustrative of how curious and, and that thirst for knowledge that kids have before they enter formal schooling. So what happens to that? You know, you and I aren't sitting around asking 100 questions a day. And any of you who work with slightly older kids probably are getting more questions like, you know, may I go to the bathroom? You know, when, when what time is lunch? Logistical questions like that. Less of those big questions that we saw earlier, the why, the how, the prying into not just accepting things for fact without understanding it yourself. We see so much less of that once kids enter kindergarten and they start their journey through formal education. And I think that that's kind of startling for us as educators to see that and to know that that's what's happening as a means of just the logistics of the school day, the time constraints, the content that we have to cover, and also somewhat the culture of formal education, which is often more focused on getting answers rather than asking questions. And in fact, getting the quote, right answers, as opposed to asking the right questions. And a lot of this is because we're focusing on teaching specific skills related to mathematics, reading, writing, science, all of that. But if we step back and we look at what curiosity is, we know that this is actually counter to what we want to achieve as educators. Curiosity feeds into all of those skills and content that we want young children to have. It's linked with academic success, which we'll talk about, and it's linked with critical thinking and all of these other skills that we want kids to have. So it's really important to focus on these early elementary years, K through five, and think about what is what is happening, how are we approaching questioning, and how can we continue to support it even after kids are kind of placed in a situation where they can't ask 100 questions a day. So now that we have a really strong framework in what intellectual curiosity is and how it's so important in the early years, especially when we start to first see it emerge, what does it mean for academic success later on in grades uh, one to five, for example? Well, as Dr. Sullivan laid out so beautifully, um, it's actually a really, not only a key determinant of later success to see curiosity in young children as early as kindergarten, but it actually is a predictor of things like their reading and math achievement with more curiosity being associated with higher achievement in all of those domains. It's actually so important that it can be used to predict language development and academic success beyond math and reading and even several years down the line beyond kindergarten. And by, you know, on the flip side, if we don't see them asking those questions or they're not encouraged to voice that kind of curiosity, we also see negative trends in their later academic uh, performance. So the takeaway is it's extremely important to foster curiosity at any age, especially at an early age, but remember what Amanda said earlier, this is not something that children are born with. This is something that we can foster and we can support in their development. So on the next slide, we're gonna talk just at the very beginning of how we do that. How do we support curiosity in young learners? 
Well, at a, the basic framework, I think, is to give children a roadmap of what to do after you ask a question. So on the slide before you, you see a number of cycles, iterative cycles. Um, you might recognize some of them like the writing process or the engineering design process. Um, some of them might be cycles that you use as an educator or cycles that you might present to, to learners for a tool for them to use. But what's similar about all of these cycles that come from all different kinds of domains, science, literacy, engineering, is that they all have a step-by-step -step process that begins with asking a question or um, perhaps an observation that sparks a question. And the reason that we start with the question is because that's where the magic happens. That's what directs the meaning, the purpose behind our curiosity. But it's not enough. I mean, asking a question is wonderful, but we need to learn then how to begin investigating that question. And this is where it can get really helpful to give students um, a little bit of a handle on what they can do next. So I'm just going to take the engineering design process as an example, because as you mentioned, as we mentioned, that's STEAM is kind of our, our wheelhouse. So whenever students ask a question in the context of designing a prototype to solve a problem, we want to encourage them after they've asked a question to consider their own idea. What's an imaginative way that you could imagine solving this problem? Once they've imagined as many different solutions as they can, we usually move on to planning or blueprinting their idea. We might even start to prototype or create or build it out together. And then, of course, we have a cycle of testing, iteratively refining and improving our prototype, sharing it with others to collect lots of other ideas about what we've created or what we're designing. And then you'll notice that as with all of these cycles on the screen, the engineering design process always starts and ends with asking another question. So it's really important when you're introducing the idea of investigation to kids to remember that the end goal is not necessarily just to land on a solution. Ultimately, you want children to be able to ask more questions and get more curious because that offers them more opportunities to continue refining and honing these investigative skills that will then refine and hone their curiosity. So I want to reinforce the idea that honing a skill is a little bit different than honing curiosity. They're both really wonderful and important, especially when you start getting into very specific domains, but they look a little bit different. So as I'm going through these examples, think in your own um, teaching setting or learning setting with children, how this might work for what you teach or what you do with young children, but I'm going to use the example of STEAM. So when we want to reinforce STEAM skills, we're thinking of helping children design and solve solutions. We're thinking of helping them understand how to scope a problem and how to seek multiple answers to try to design their own creative solution to whatever problem they're exploring. They might need to consider the clients. They might need to consider um, what constraints there are. So when we're building skills, we might want to introduce the idea of what a blueprint is and how to follow it. We might invite them to follow a worksheet and we might set up scenarios for them, uh, almost like kitchen chemistry, where you are hoping that they sort of arrive at a right answer. These are all really helpful ways to just foster skills so that they can practice and repeat the steps that are involved in STEAM play. But when we're looking at curiosity, it's a slightly different, very nuanced thing. And it's equally important, if not more important. So sometimes you might need to work a little bit longer on these skills. But as soon as you have a baseline understanding in your students at any age, you want to invite them to start taking ownership over their curiosity and their exploration. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like inviting them to explore open-ended problems, problems that are a little bit fuzzy around the edges, a little ill-defined, that offer a lot of different opportunities to explore solutions. Many valid approaches is typically one of the hallmarks of a great engineering design problem because it means that a lot of different kids with a lot of different backgrounds and ideas are able to find an entry point that's meaningful to them. And of course, curiosity sort of is rooted in the idea that kids are personally invested and curious themselves about the question that they're asking. So you want to allow room for them to become personally motivated, for them to ask questions that are meaningful to them, not just that align perfectly with your syllabus. Now, of course, if you have a very strong curricular bent that you need to follow, we want to make sure that you have options to do that, which is why we're going to get later on into how some of the pedagogical resources can be flexible to fit any domain. But this is basically just uh, one clarification of how curiosity sort of looks a little bit different than just reinforcing and rehabilitating skills, basically. 
Okay, so we talked earlier about how questions can be exasperating sometimes. Sometimes they can come out of left field, they make you laugh. So this is sort of, I don't know if you guys have ever seen those memes of you know social media versus reality. We're gonna kind of take the opposite spin. We're gonna start with reality and then give you some a tool in your toolbox that you might use instead of what feels maybe like a knee-jerk reaction to some of these questions. If you've ever had the gut reaction to say, I just don't know, I don't know the answer to that question. Well, that's one answer. Another tack might be to engage them more in thinking about it with you. You could say, that's a really interesting question. And, and honestly, I'm not sure. I genuinely don't know the answer, but what could we try to do together to learn more? So instead of terminating that question line of questioning, you sort of offer an invitation to continue questioning, even though you're not exactly sure yourself what the next step should be. And by the way, this is a great opportunity to revisit one of your cycles of inquiry that you might be teaching with your students. If you're tempted to just launch into a you know, fifth grade reading level explanation of an adult understanding of why the sky is blue, <laughs> I encourage you to take a step back and maybe remember that your kids might not be ready to hear that explanation or they might be asking something slightly different than what you think. So before launching into an answer, and remember, we want them to practice finding answers on their own. You might say something like, you know, that's a good question. I've wondered that myself. Do you have a guess? I would love to hear yours and maybe I can share my idea with you as well. So you're turning it more into a dialogue rather than steering the conversation as the didactic educator. And on those days where you're sort of just thinking, I don't have time for this, it's easy to just slip into, wow, you have a lot of questions today and move on. And there's a place for that, but one way I might tell you want them to stop asking questions, it's just not a good moment, might be to say, I love your curiosity. I can't talk about that right now because your little brother is late for soccer practice and you just had a poop explosion, but would you like me to write that question down and we can research it together at another time? So this sends the message that what you're asking is important. It might not be the biggest priority right this second, but it's big enough to me that I wanna save that idea and come back to it later with you. So remember with all of these answers, the goal is not to sort of end the line of question or terminate the conversation. You wanna make sure that we're helping kids ask questions, we're valuing their questions, and we're encouraging them to continue asking more questions even after we think we've found a solution. So just to summarize, support the curious child, whether someone with a K already curious mindset, or you're working with a student that you'd really like to see up their curious games so that you can get them ready to succeed and thrive in their coming academic career. Well, as scientists, Dr. Sullivan and I are always going to say the first step is to gather more data. So first, make sure you really do understand the idea and the question that they're asking before you start offering their own explanations. Now remember they're young children, even a fifth grader might not be ready to hear your answer. So this is a good opportunity to just take a back seat and listen before you launch into it. As an adult, they're always gonna be looking to you to see how you explore questions yourself. So model for them how you look for evidence. Remember to engage your five senses, think about how you collect and log information. Do you have a notebook? Do you voice record on your phone? And use your, um, I, I would even suggest to, uh, narrate out loud how you get from your evidence to your hypothesis to making an informed guess. You know, this gets at that critical thinking that's so important that Amanda was mentioning earlier. We want to make sure that students see the connections between asking their questions and using that information to make real decisions in the world. Of course, you want to make sure that you are not the only information source that they attend. You want to encourage them to check other information sources like Pebble Go, which we'll hear about in a moment. Um, you want to encourage them to think about other people as well. You can ask your friends, you can find an expert in your community, or you could, of course, look up books and resources in the library. And finally, never forget that that iterative cycle always starts with a new question. So make sure that you ask them what new questions they have at the end of their exploring. Remember that every new question is an opportunity to practice their growing investigation skills. So by coming up with opportunities to continue to hone and refine questions, we're growing curious kids who will grow into curious adults, who become curious citizens and lifelong learners. Yeah, exactly. I think that 
that's such a beautiful transition to wrapping up our portion of what Amanda and I are sharing with you today. We focused a lot on early childhood and then looking at those elementary school years and how curiosity is linked with academic success. But the truth is that curiosity is linked with lifelong career success and just this ability to be a really engaged, curious citizen. Research has shown that curiosity is linked with being innovative and creative in the workplace and that curious employees are more flexible. They're easier to adapt to organizational changes or things being different than what was planned. But moreover, even outside of the workplace and workplace success, we see curious people as lifelong critical thinkers, lifelong learners, and that they're questioning the status quo. They're, they're not just taking things for granted that they are the way they are and there's nothing we can do about it. There are people who will be consistently looking at their own personal work and thinking about how they can improve it, how they can iterate, how they can make things even better. And that just leads to being more curious, more engaged citizens overall. So the in a nutshell, what we're all doing, what you're all doing, working with kids in K-5 and hoping, hopefully fostering their curiosity is going to have a lifelong positive effect. So the key takeaways to remember about all of that research and uh, tips that we shared is that curiosity is important. It drives critical thinking. It's foundational for not only academic success, but career success. And the biggest takeaway, if you don't take away anything else, is to know that our role and what we say and what we do and what we model as adults is important and it is critical, whatever the age of your students who you work with. We can foster curiosity in young children. We can help support curiosity in older children, young adults and adolescents. And hey, we can even work on our own curiosity and continue to try to build our own curious mindsets as adults. So in summary, we're going to hand off to Shannon really quick. We just wanted to remind you all that if you have questions about this or if you wanted to connect with either or both of us, you can find us individually and as the Amandas on Twitter. We're going to be following the hashtag PebbleGoCuriosity chat as well. So definitely reach out to us and let us know what you're curious about now. And we'll especially want to hear what you're curious about because we are so excited to partner with Capstone and Pebble Go and launch a blog series. We're going to be really digging in to all of the topics that we just covered, what is curiosity, how to foster it, and, and stretching that even further um, over the course of the series. So please do put your questions in the chat. We want to know what do you want to hear about in this blog series. And without further ado, I will turn it over to Shannon. Okay, that was awesome. I learned so much and can definitely relate to all the things that you talked about. So it was great. Okay, let's get my screen up. Can you see that, Brian? Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, I am so excited to share some ideas just to spark and support curiosity in your library and classroom. And being in a preschool to 12th grade building, we're all together in one building. We have about a thousand kids. I see a lot of curiosity every single day and it's amazing. I, I love my job as a librarian, but one of my favorite things is just to work with our teachers and our kids in their classroom and the library and hear all the things that they come up with every day, those questions. The questions in the chat were so funny because I just hear so many every day that I could write a book. I love them. And so a lot of things that we use to really spark that curiosity, we like to give our kids resources that not only are they familiar with, but resources too that are going to get them really thinking and, and excited about learning. And one of their favorites is Pebble Go. And our kids as young as our preschool kids, and we use Pebble Go Next too with our older elementary and even our sixth graders, they love just having time to explore those. If it's at school or if it is at home um, on their own time. And so a lot of the things that I create as the librarian are places that they can go and experience 
these things just to be able to explore what they're curious about. And so one that is coming up, we just kicked this off this week, having them go and we're having a reading Olympics in February. And one of the things they can do is just go and research what they want in Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next. And the reading Olympics, if you are curious, I put links and we'll share this afterwards. So you have these resources too. But, you know, think about how something like that, like giving them that choice of maybe going and listening to a podcast or listening to an audio book or going to Pebble Go and being able just to explore things, you know, that they're really curious about is important to kids. To go along with Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next, Capstone has created these great curiosity cards. And I love these because they're really designed to inspire that inquiry-based learning that we want um, for our kids. And so there are packs for both and with what questions from Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next. So these are really great. And something that is brand new are these curiosity game show Pebble Go lesson plans. I love these because there is one for our younger kids with Pebble Go and you'll find everything that you need for the lesson plan and even the activities then that you can print off, but also you can pair it up with Pebble Go Next. And so I'm really excited to use these in our library and in our classrooms at Van Meter. And so these are just a great resource and they join other lesson plans and activities that are on the capstone site. And so you can go and find different activities and different lesson plans for all the different modules, but also throughout the year. And, and this is kind of one of our go-tos too. Another thing that I love, and I see these pop up on Twitter and I always get so excited because it's something that we can tie into to the library and classroom are the monthly Pebble Go calendars. And on these, there's little like, you know, it's always, I always say like, there's something we can celebrate every single day. And kids love that. They love having experiences and they love to being able to explore something like this, to find something that they are curious about and interested in. And so when you follow Pebble Go, on either Facebook or you follow Capstone on Twitter, you'll see these little things that they put out. Like every time there's something like January 17th, just a few days ago, it was Kids Inventors Day. And so it makes me think too, like, oh, that'd be something really fun to share with our kids. So then I'm able to share that with our teachers and our kids and remind them that there are lots of different inventors that they could look up, whatever topic it might be. It also kind of sparks our curiosity as teachers too, when we follow Capstone and Pebble Go to just on social media, those ideas that we can get. Capstone Connect is one of my new favorite things. I use this every single day. And as the librarian collaborating with our teachers and our kids, it is something that hands down has changed the way that we do things. And so in Capstone Connect, you can discover Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next articles, um, Capstone Interactive eBooks and also those instructional materials that they have paired up. So when you go into Capstone Connect, you search either by standards or titles. And so the other day when our first grade teachers, they wrote me and said that they are focusing around earth and different maps and different homes. So I went and I searched then homes, just put it in there, was able to pull up some books. And then I went back and I searched even by standards to see if there were more things. And so in here, I can pick my state, I can pick my subject and then grade level, and then go into those standards to see if there are other things that pair up. So I was able to find some really great resources that paired up with those standards and things that I knew my kids would really like to explore. And so taking those articles around maps, or maybe it was around globes and putting them together in a choice board. So then our kids could go here and the teachers weren't, you know, just sharing an article about living in the city or a physical map. We share this a lot of different choice boards. So kids have that voice and choice on what they're exploring and where they want to go when they're learning about earth. Another thing that we did after pushing that out and having them explore for a couple days is we brought in our Orboot globes. And these are great because they're interactive globes that have augmented reality tied to them. So when the kids then use their iPads and that app, 
they can go to the globe and pull up different places that they want to explore. Our first graders also love, like all of our kids, love going into Google Earth. And so we took this one step further and they've been getting lots of different postcards from places around the world. And so now we're going in and we're even tying them in. You can make a project in Google Earth and tie those specific postcards or even like the choice board that we did to our school and tie that in as well. So the kids are super excited about that project and they're helping with that too. The next thing are just mentioning the interactive eBooks and you saw in the choice board that we had one about maps. And the great thing about using Capstone Connect is it's really easy to tie these resources to choice boards because you have the link and you have an image. And I just grab these and then I hyperlink them within those choice boards. And so it makes it really, really easy to use Capstone Connect for that. And since we are on Capstone Interactive, I was thinking this morning, like, oh, I should mention this great series of books. Um, Curious Pearl are some of our kids' favorite books. And it's really fun because you can take those things that maybe they're doing in science or in STEAM or the library, and you can tie in these topics. And so taking like a fictional text and then tying it into a topic that they're doing within science or a part of the curriculum, these are a really perfect one when we're talking about curiosity too. Just to touch base also a little bit more on choice boards and how we use those to spark curiosity. We have our Winter Olympics coming up, and this is something that we're going to do actually within our whole, whole school, preschool to 12th grade. And we're kicking it off with an opening ceremony. And then that next week, we're actually doing a whole school STEAM challenge. And what they're going to be doing is creating a marble luge track. And then they're going to be trying out their, I love this idea, taking a little Lego man and putting it in like an ice cube tray. So then they're frozen and they go down those luges really easy. But we want to, before this, we want to just build that background knowledge and have them be really curious and kind of tuned into the different things that maybe they want to learn about the Olympics. And so we put together this choice board that goes over the history, um, learning about China, learning about specifically about these Olympics and different things that they might see, and then taking Capstone Interactive books and even Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next and tying it into this choice board so they have a place to go to explore and just learn more about these different topics. And then at the very end of kind of learning this, they can go and really explore on their own if it's going to the reading Olympics or playing a game online or drawing. And so there's a link to in this slide. You guys can get to all of these resources, even the Capstone Interactive books and the Pebble Go articles are open and free for everyone to use through the Olympics. And so a fun little treat for all of you to use with your kids too. The last thing is Pebble Go Create. And for those of you who have used Buncee, um, Buncee now is part of Capstone. And so the newest thing coming soon is Pebble Go Create. And one thing that we do a lot of at our school is we use Buncee or Pebble Go Create, um, but it's going to be very soon. And a lot of our topics that the kids are exploring and learning about. And so in January, well, here in Iowa, we have about two feet of snow right now. And so not only going and learning things that are happening within our January choice board, but also specifically learning about snow this month has really lent um, itself to the teachers asking me to come in so the kids can use that knowledge that they have and use what they are really curious about winter and snow and snowflakes to create things that are in Buncee. And so our first graders, they had so much fun last week taking things that they had learned and then putting that knowledge into these really sweet Bunsies. And they're interactive and they're so fun for the kids to be able to create and also share. But one of my favorite projects, hands down this year, was with our preschoolers. And the Amandas will love this. When you guys were talking, I thought you would like be our preschool teachers, like best friends, because same exact great mindset. And whenever our kids in our preschool, they think of the topics that really guide them throughout the year. And this particular class 
They were curious about flushing the toilet, where water went, how things worked. And so this picture is there underneath our school with Pat, our head maintenance man. And Pat is teaching the kids about pipes and talking to them. And they even had somebody come from our town and talk about our water tower. And I didn't know this. They told me that they get in a scuba suit and they clean it. And I was like, what? In Van Meter, Iowa? Like, I couldn't believe that. And the neat thing that happened then was we not only tied in some of those books using Capstone Connect, you know, finding the books. This one was great about cleaning water and having them read it together. And the kids, even though, you know, they're four years old, they are so curious and so tuned in to all that knowledge. But then we went into Buncee and they drew pictures on paper and I uploaded them into Buncee. So we uploaded these and then the kids talked about and the teacher wrote on there what they actually learned. And it is amazing, you know, like the welding of the pipe and the scuba diver getting into the water tower, like all these great things. But, you know, you think about this experience and this is something that they're going to remember forever. And so I think tying these things together and just making sure, you know, that you're listening to your kids and that you are giving them the resources and experiences they need to have those questions answered and fostered, I think is just so wonderful. So as you can see, the sky's the limit on how you can spark and support curiosity with Capstone. And that's just touching kind of on the surface, but hopefully that gave you some ideas too. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute, Brian. <laughs> I love Zoom sometimes, don't we all? Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, Amanda's, Shannon, um, super excited um, just about the power that is in uh, letting kids be curious. Um, it really is exciting to know that, you know, something that I think we're, we have somewhere deep inside us that can be tapped into is really cool. Um, and the fact that then it can be just, taken in so many different directions to develop critical thinking skills um, and knowing the impact it has. Um, I, for me, one of the interesting things in doing some initial research and then talking to the Amandas about this is just how important it is to uh, high school success and the data around that, um, the impact to college success um, and a lot of the data that's coming out more and more on that and even just talking to business leaders and how huge curiosity is to career success. So, um, you know, it's, it is a lifelong thing. So um, two things I want to connect with you all about um, is our way of saying thank you for attending the webinar. Uh, we are doing a January Curiosity Crate giveaway. Um, so this really is for a uh, classroom or library. Um, we want to give you a hundred dollar gift card to use um, to enhance your uh, students' experience. Um, an example of a Pe Pebble Go Passport. Um, new uh, thing that actually we just created. Um, more of those to come in different areas too. Uh, but really, let's students get in and explore. So we'd love to get that in front of you to check out. Uh, laptop clings for any and all of your devices in the classroom. Uh, Pebble Go poster. Pebble Go bookmarks, and then uh, one of our. Uh, for many of you, you're well aware of our capstone uh, tote bags, uh, with the most current being a reading is for everyone that we got to make a couple years ago that has rarely seen the light of day. Um, so it'll be an option to click on this. I think Char is putting it in the uh, um, the chat as well. Um, but this will be in a follow up email. So if you don't have a chance now to uh, sign up and you want to feel free to do it. But we just love to uh, say thank you and. Uh, encourage you to uh, use different resources we have for you. So, um, and then the other thing really want to highlight here, um, curiosity is a huge focus for us this year and helping um, to build resources um, both in our products and adjacent to our products to help uh, educators at all levels. Um, so as many of uh, my colleagues have heard me talking about my focus really for this year is I want to equip uh, teachers who may be entering the class for the first time um, to be able to do things on day one with their students that can help tap into curiosity. Um, I wanna be able to help veteran librarians and teachers and teacher leaders 
uh, to be able to impact curriculum and uh, what's happening in a school and district level. And then I want to be able to help uh, equip uh, decision makers to understand how important uh, curiosity is when they are making um, you know, decisions about what they're going to be doing district-wide or statewide, um, because this is really an important topic. It's not just a uh, Pebble Go and Capstone topic. This is something we know has direct impact and could be a huge, um, huge benefit to our entire nation. So um, we want to give as much uh, support as we can. So one of the ways we can do that is through our Pebble Go Educators Group. Uh, so it is for all Pebble Go users. And when I say that, obviously current users, so teachers, librarians, curriculum uh, directors, tech coordinators, you name it, it's perfect for you. Um, if you're using Pebble Go, Pebble Go Next. Um, or the other uh, portion of the group who this may be very appropriate for is if you're taking a serious look and saying, uh, what does Pebble Go look like in my school or my district? Uh, it's a great group to join and uh, ask some of those questions. Um, we are a vibrant community of uh, educators that are here to help. And so that's what we're doing is trying to foster that. Um, some exciting opportunities to uh, get access to a lot of the resources we mentioned even before we put them on the website. So it acts as a little bit of our uh, pre-launch group. So for instance, uh, right now uh, we're giving away curiosity cards for anybody who is a Pebble Educator group member. So if you sign up, you can get actual cards um, sent to you. Um, and then lesson plans um, that Shannon shared on the curiosity game shows, those will be posted there as early as uh, Monday. So um, with more to come. So a lot of stuff we really want to help out with. And that's also a great place to just give us your feedback. Um, if you're not on Facebook, that's okay too. Um, we are on Twitter um, and really active on there. Um, and then Instagram as well. So I know the social channels, but even if you're not on any social, awesome. Uh, there's ways to engage with us on our website. Uh, so you can uh, submit our contact us form. Um, you can uh, connect with us via the blogs um, or honestly, even just call um, up Capstone and they will connect you with myself or somebody who can be of uh, help to you and provide support. So um, really want to thank you for attending. But before we go, I want to make sure to give uh, a chance for questions, because like I mentioned, this really is all about questions you might have. So what are you curious about? Um, what did today spark in you? And Amanda's or Shannon, if there's any questions you've seen in the chat that you'd love to address, let me know. Um, there's a question in here about uh, professional development. Uh, yes, I will be providing a uh, professional development certificate that'll give you credit for one hour. Um, most schools accept that as fine. Some districts um, do. Um, if you have any issues, let, let us know what information, but other than that, um, we are more than uh, happy to give out uh, professional development proof for you because huge time for you to come and learn about uh, curiosity and its impact. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, that email will actually go out tomorrow uh, morning about 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and it'll have in there for you, again, a recording of the webinar, a link to that. It'll have the slides for you as well. Um, so any that Shannon mentioned linking to or that the Amanda's talked about, um, as well as you can have the giveaway link in there. Um, there will be the professional development certificate and then um, just a way to connect with us. So if you have other questions or if there's um, you know, any information we can provide about obviously Pebble Go or any of the other uh, things we talked about today. So anything else? Um, Shannon, there's a question in here for you that I think is really interesting. If yeah. you, how do your kids uh, use the choice boards? Um, we use them in a lot of different ways. If it's like within the classrooms, kind of how you saw the one about maps and earth, how they use them maybe to, the teacher might kick it off maybe by sharing a few things and then letting the kids explore them. Uh, we use them in the library to guide a lot of the research and inquiry like based projects that we do. But again, we use it just for like 
that natural exploration too. And then the kids use them a lot at home. And so a lot of them are driven by our curriculum. Uh, that was a good example. And then a lot of them are also just driven by things that like the monthly choice boards, things that maybe the kids can learn about on their own. And so there's lots of different ways. And Sometimes they might even have, like, we're getting ready for the 100th day of school pretty soon. You know, sometimes they might just have a couple different resources. And we use these even with our middle and high school um, age kids, too, because really it's just a super creative, interactive, um, visually, you know, the kids love it, way to curate and share information, but by giving them, you know, that choice that they have as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there's a question about uh, if the recording is shared, will they be able to get a PD certificate? Um, unfortunately, there's no way for me to be able to get a PD certificate to anybody you share with, um, just because I don't have their email addresses to be able to do that with. Um, but definitely feel free to share it. That's what it's there for. Um, so if it's any benefit to them, um, which I very much think it would be, uh, share away. Um, and is a recommendation uh, if they're wondering why, if they just sign up for a webinar, even if they can't attend, they'll still get some information um, in the follow-up. So, um, but very good question. Um, apart from that, the other thing I wanna leave with is uh, the Amanda's mentioned it, um, but there is a really cool blog series we're in process developing that's gonna unpack a lot more of this. Um, in bite-sized chunks. So really getting uh, deep into some uh, key areas around what curiosity is, how, how to really use it um, to impact things like critical thinking skills, what it means for, uh, you know, third grade, um, is there into that grade? So the one thing I would ask for, um, if you have other ideas about topics you'd love us to cover, like the Amanda's mentioned, uh, we would love to hear it because uh, we want this to be a resource on the blog that is supportive of what questions you have. Um, so please share that with us. You can uh, respond to the email that you'll get uh, tomorrow morning. Um, obviously, if you're still here in the next couple of seconds in the chat, or let us know on the contact us form on the website. Um, or if you have a capstone rep that you work with, definitely you can let them know as well, and they will forward that on, and uh, we will uh, work on that from there. So. Thank you all so much for attending. Um, it has been an absolute joy to be able to uh, get to hear from the Amandas and Shannon just about the impact of curiosity. Um, be on the lookout too, uh, especially in the Facebook group, we will have a survey um, asking just kind of uh, what your thoughts were about this uh, because this is very topical. We wanna make sure it is um, hitting the spot of uh, interest for you and really helps to uh, solve uh, some of the challenges you might be experiencing with students. So thank you so much. Again, we appreciate your time and have a wonderful rest of your day.